Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside that very hot weather window this afternoon. And here's a look down at part of what's left of the fire from the uh, over the weekend, the Kalakam fire. You can see that burn scar right there. We'll talk more about that fire coming up, but quite a scar there from that fire that did get over 3,000 acres over the weekend. Boy, it really blew up on Saturday. This great shot provided by our PTZ camera and local tell and Sky Fi, bringing us that great video all weekend long of that fire. And it was a hot one out there. We have dangerous heat to tell you about, and that's gonna happen over the next four days. In fact, we have a heat advisory through Thursday until eight o'clock Thursday night. Remember, drink lots of water, get in that air conditioning, and conditioning, avoid strenuous activity. If you work outside, just make sure you take some breaks where you go in and also drink plenty of fluid. And here's a look at some of those temperatures. We're talking dangerous heat. How about that? Wenatchee in red 100 today and tomorrow, a bit of a break from the triple digits on Wednesday. And then Thursday may be our hottest day yet. So a heat advisory in effect from Monday until Thursday. We'll talk much more heat wave coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Public health officials said on Friday that a Douglas County man in his 50s became the 11th Wenatchee Valley resident to die from COVID-19. The body of a Linwood woman was found along the shore of the Columbia River near Crescent Bar Friday morning. And three people were injured Sunday morning when a car went off Highway 97, struck a metal gate, and then rolled onto its top north of Ellensburg. But first, we begin tonight. Though some evacuation notices do remain in place for several areas, firefighters have been able to significantly slow the growth of the Clockham Fire near Malaga. As of this morning and early afternoon, there had been no confirmed structure losses and no injuries. According to Southeast Washington Interagency Incident Commander Leonard Johnson, the fire is now 80% contained after burning approximately 3,337 acres. At the peak of the fire on Saturday afternoon, more than 250 firefighting personnel were working on suppression efforts. That number has now been reduced to 67. All the personnel working the fire from the air have been sent home. Kingsbury, Clockham, and Jump Off Roads remain closed today. Those three areas also remain at level two evacuations while Tarpiskin Road is at level one. Today's firefighting plan is to improve the already established containment lines around the fire while crews work inside the lines, eliminating hot spots and shoring up lines on the west, west side of the fire to protect structures and timber in that area. The fire started about 2.14 Friday and quickly grew as strong winds pushed the fire in dry grass and brush. Here is a map of the fire area. Clockham comes to the right and splits into Kingsbury, uh, right about where it says DP10. Don't have that map up for you. Jump Off Road is on the upper left part of that map. The SkyFi cameras, I hope you did catch that over the weekend. They caught a lot of that, at, a lot of the fire activity. And thank you to Tucker Wagner for providing that. Well, public health officials said on Friday that a Douglas County man in his 50s became the 11th Wenatchee Valley resident to die from the novel coronavirus. The patient's passing marked the second local death from COVID-19 reported in the last week. The Chelan Douglas Health District disclosed the death of the 10th patient, a woman from Douglas County on July 17th. As of Friday, Confluence Health listed 23 patients hospitalized for treatment of COVID-19, seven of them under care in the Central Washington Hospital ICU. All but one are residents of Chelan, Douglas, Grant, or Okanagan counties. All told, 1,433 people from Chelan and Douglas counties have tested positive now for COVID-19 since the virus arrived in Washington at the start of the year. The health district recorded 30 new diagnoses on, 30, on Thursday rather, and 336 in just the last week. Well, the body of a Linwood woman was found along the shore of the Columbia River near Crescent Bar Friday morning. 43-year-old Krista Gerard had been reported missing by family after she went floating on the river Thursday evening and then never returned. The Grant County Sheriff's Office said search efforts continued through the night and early morning. She'd been staying with family in the Crescent Bar area. The Sheriff's Office said there are no signs of foul play and Grant County Coroner Craig Morrison will be conducting an autopsy. 
Well, three people were injured Sunday morning when a, a car struck a metal gate and then rolled onto its top north of Ellensburg. The Washington State Patrol says a passenger in the 1995 Pontiac, 24-year-old Jordan Hansen of Kittitas, had to be airlifted to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle with his injuries. The driver of the vehicle, 29-year-old Kamara Rice of Roslyn, and another passenger, Jeremy Sieberts of Cleellum, were transported to Kittitas Valley Medical Health Care with less serious injuries. Rice said Sieberts, uh, were, they were wearing seat belts, but Hansen was not. The state patrol says the cause of the rollover, which happened as the car was traveling southbound just after 9 a.m., remains under investigation. Well, coming up next, the Chelan County Sheriff's Office is asking the public for assistance identifying a burglary suspect. Every summer, the Upper Wenatchee and Icicle Rivers grow crowded with rafts and inner tubes. Now Chelan County wants your input on how those river sections get used for recreation. And in addition to dealing with wind-fanned flames, firefighters on the Kalakam Fire over the weekend had to watch out for wildlife both protected and dangerous. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. Don't worry, all the fun is around the corner. There's no better time to get ready than now with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa Sale. Stock Up and Save Sale is now going on in-store and online at BlueLagoonPoolAndSpa.com. Even pool heaters are on sale. Financing available upon approval. Credit 24-month, no interest with equal payments. Stop by today or order online at BlueLagoonPoolAndSpa.com. Free water testing available in-store or curbside. Don't wait, the sale is going on now. Welcome back. In another news, the Chelan County Sheriff's Office is asking the public for assistance identifying a burglary suspect. A surveillance photo taken at a recent burglary at Tin Lily in downtown Chelan shows the man inside the restaurant and it shows the suspect he has a distinct tattoo on his right shoulder. The burglary was reported about 5.45 p.m. last Wednesday. Anyone with information on the man is asked to contact the Sheriff's Office. Well, every summer, the Upper Wenatchee and Icicle Rivers grow crowded with rafts and inner tubes. I can attest to that. I was there yesterday. Now Chelan County wants your input on how those river sections get used for recreation. An online survey asks residents how they use their rivers and what use, uses cause them concern. Chelan County Natural Resources Director Mike Caputa said one of the many to help understand human activity and safety along the Leavenworth Bend. Uh, we're also trying to get a sense of just the sheer numbers uh, of folks out there. So we do have someone out there counting uh, for six days, six different days um, over a three-week period just to try to understand the numbers out there as well. And we're doing some mapping to, to understand where all the different locations are. We're also trying to understand the seasonality of this, right? I mean, the, the water levels in the icicle 
uh, are higher early season, they drop off, harder to float down, and then the activity appears to shift to the main stem Wenatchee River. We're going to compile all of this information into a report, uh, and then our committee is going to take a look at all that information and figure out what the next steps are. I mean, clearly there's been some interest from the local community in, in, in addressing some of the impacts out there, either from uh, neighbors you know, who live along Icicle Creek uh, or the main stem Wenatchee River, uh, people who live on the Wenatchee River uh, where a lot of the rescues uh, occur. Uh, there have been some issues with dogs running around, um, uh, uh, people trampling on the banks. And so we're, we're really just trying to get a handle on what's going on out there, uh, and then what are some potential uh, management scenarios in the future. Well, in addition to dealing with wind-fanned flames, firefighters on the Clockham Fire over the weekend had to watch out for wildlife, both protected and dangerous. The Federal Bureau of Land Management had a resource advisor on hand to identify protected animals and plant life in the fire's path and recommended mitigation practices. Among the protected species on the hillsides is the Washington ground squirrel. Not on a protected list was a den of rattlesnakes a dozer crew ran across while doing line work. The incident team on the fire said finding a whole den of rattlesnakes was highly unusual for firefighters. The Southeast Washington incident team said firefighters didn't want to stick around and count just how many rattlesnakes were in that den and the resource manager had no interest and checking out those snakes. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Looking for a faster way to kickstart your business career? Look to the Charter College Associate Degree in Business Management a convenient online program at an ABHES accredited institution. You could earn a degree in just 14 months, a degree that positions you for up to 18% higher earnings than a high school diploma. Plus, Charter will assist you in finding a job. Visit chartercollege.edu to get started because we work to get you to work. Hi, this is Brian Snyder with Black Rock Asphalt Services here in Wenatchee, your local Black Rock seal coat company. Have you looked at your driveway or parking lot lately? Is it gray and oxidized? Does it have cracks that have not been taken care of? Or do you have striping that is pretty much non-existent? Please give us a call locally here, 509-665-9769. Learn more at blackrockasphaltsealcoating.com. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today, 509-663-1710. Introducing the most capable Sierra lineup ever. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. A fire burned about 15 acres of wheat northwest of Afreda Saturday and threatened structures before crews from three agencies were able to extinguish it. In tonight's feature story, Grant County Fire District 13 takes us along as one of its tenders in Afreda responds to that fire. It was near Road J Northwest and Baird Springs Road. Northwest. Our 
Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to those details, outside we go to a sweltering North Central Washington today. Looking down from our cross camera up in Wenatchee Heights at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley. Not a cloud to be found around the Wenatchee area today. And it was hot. Not much wind for any kind of reprieve either. Just a hot one out there unofficially today. 98 degrees. That's 9 degrees above where we should be for this time of year. 89 is normal. 66 is where we started and 63 is our normal low temperature. Record high and I believe that is our second hottest all time temperature here in Wenatchee. Recorded at 108 degrees in 1998. I think 109 is our all time high. 54 our record low and that was set back in 1976. Sunrise 534 sunset tonight at 20 minutes to 9. Now let's take a peek at how your Tuesday will shape up and I told you heat advisory at the top of the news in effect for today, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. So you know what that means tomorrow 102 in Moses Lake and Afreda 101 for Quincy about 100 degrees here in the Wenatchee area for tomorrow. Cashmere, you should see 100. Eniat, Chelan, and also Omac, even Lake Wenatchee tomorrow, 91 beautiful degrees. Let's go to that surface loop now. We'll show you the next seven days beginning with tonight. We can expect mostly clear skies tonight. And obviously, with that hot weather today, we're going to stay very mild tonight. But look at clear skies all the way back into the upper Midwest and uh, central United States. I'll tell you, it's hot coast to coast in the U.S. right now. For Tuesday, don't forget heat advisory in effect, unseasonably hot. We're still not near record high temperatures, but notice the red and that always indicates about 100 degrees. That's us here in uh, North Central Washington, parts of California and also down in the desert southwest. We're hot all along the western United States right now. Wednesday, that heat advisory will continue. We're going to sound like a broken record as we make our way through this week. There is an area of low pressure spinning right off the coast, but with all the high pressure right here in the interior. It's just keeping that low pressure offshore. So really no relief from this heat as we get into Thursday. Heat advisory still. Friday, a little relief begins to come our way, mainly because we're going to see some windy conditions. There's a bit of a trough moving through and a low pressure area inside that trough. So that'll cool us off a little bit on Friday. Not a whole lot down to the mid 90s. But as we get into Saturday, then much cooler temperatures, sunshine. It will be a little bit breezy. You can see those isobars packed pretty tightly in central Washington. So Saturday, much cooler. We're talking mainly mid 80s. So it's going to be very comfortable as we kick off the weekend. And then by Sunday, mostly sunny once again. Weak high pressure builds back in by Sunday and we will see warmer temperatures. So as we end the weekend, we're looking at temperatures right about 90 degrees. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling seven day forecast. 
71 our overnight low tonight 100 for Tuesday 98 on Wednesday. I think Thursday may be even a little hotter than that with a low of 73 96 then on Friday and there's that bit of a cool down 87 Saturday and back to 90 on Sunday and that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper. I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you wanna do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Monday to you. The Mariners snapped a 15-game losing streak to Houston Sunday, including 12 in a row at Minute Maid Park as Seattle came from behind to beat the Astros 7-6. to Tim Lopes was 3-for-4 at the plate with two runs, while Shedlong Jr. was 2-for-5 with two RBIs. Hero of the day and so far this season, rookie Kyle Lewis. Seattle center fielder came through with a big hit Sunday to power the Mariners to the victory. The order Lopes, Smith, and Hudson. Up the middle base hit, Tim Lopes. His second base hit, he's been on base three times. I didn't think he would give in to him. Goes right back to his best pitch, which is his changeup, but misses with it. For the Mariners in the eighth, down a run. Hit hard, base hit, right field. Here comes Lopes. Here's a throw. Not in time. Tie ball game. Shed Long with a game tying single. And we're knotted up at 5 5. Second RBI today for Shed. A second hit today. Here we go again at 1 and 2. Take a pitch upstairs. Shed with a stolen base. Go ahead, run at second. And base hit right field. Reddick with the big arm. Nola scores right behind him. He said, look, he's in there safely. What a great slide. Nice win for the Mariners. Dan Altavia worked a inning of relief for the victory. Manager Scott Service said it was great to see the youngsters finally come through in the win column. Awesome uh, job by our ball club. Uh, everybody uh, chipped in in this one, but, you know, a lot of really good at-bats. Uh, we got on Grinky early, and then uh, kind of the come-from-behind hits there off Davinsky. It um, was great. You know, like I said, quality at bats up and down the lineup. And Kyle Lewis again, big knock in the right field, kind of slowing it down and, and taking what uh, Davinsky was giving him. Uh, Davinsky's tough. You know, he's got the good change up and the off speed pitches, but uh, a lot of big hits. Shed had a big hit, obviously, in that inning. Seeger swung the bat well again today. Uh, Marmo Laos will never forget his first hit in the big leagues uh, as he got deked at second base. Uh, good job there offensively in our bullpen. Um, today, you know, we're still trying to figure out those roles, but uh, we did a little bit different today, uh, trying to keep the game a little bit close and getting some guys in there. And then, um, you know, Taylor Williams, first save, never easy, and certainly against the top of that lineup, they they really made it difficult for him. But happy for him that he got through it, and we have a lot of really happy young players right now. Uh, it's a fun clubhouse to be in. Tim Lopes says it was a complete team effort up and down the lineup to get Sunday's victory. Yeah, the uh, the hitters look good today. Um, you know, Caleb's been swinging out of his mind, and uh, Seager's been swinging about well. JP Shed, um, I felt like it was a really big team effort today against Granky. Um, we got to him early, uh, which was nice to see. And um, you know, hitting can be contagious a lot of the time, so it was uh, definitely a lot of fun. 
Mariners and Astros are wrapping up their four-game series today. Kendall Graveman facing Josh Adams. Now, going back to opening day on Friday, Marco Gonzalez got roughed up for four runs on five hits as Seattle dropped the opener to Houston 8-2 to the final. Michael Brantley had the hot stick for Houston going two for three with the three-run homer. Kyle Lewis and Kyle Seeger accounted for Seattle's only runs with solo home runs apiece. On Saturday, a similar story as Taiwan Walker gave up five runs on seven hits and three and a third. Astros came out on top in that one by a final of 7-2 to two as we open up the Les Schwab scoreboard. Yuri Gurriel and George Springer each homered for the home team. J.P. Crawford led Seattle at the plate going 3-4 for four with a run while Kyle Lewis homered for the second straight game. Well, it's early, but let's check the Les Schwab American League scoreboard and the standings as of now. Trevor Story hit a two-run home run in a three-run fourth inning and added another solo shot in the sixth. To power Colorado past Texas 5-2. Oakland scored five runs in the first inning and held on to beat the Angels 6-4. Sean Murphy homered for the A's while Mike Trout hit his first home run of the season for Los Angeles. Houston and Oakland lead the standings each with two and one marks. Seattle, Los Angeles, and Texas all at one and two. Well, the Seahawks pulled off a blockbuster trade on Friday afternoon to bring one of the NFL's best defensive backs to Seattle. The Hawks acquired All-Pro and Pro Bowl safety Jamal Adams from the Jets in exchange for two first-round draft picks, a third-round pick, and safety Bradley McDougal. After the trade, Adams went to Twitter saying, quote, You have a man on a mission, a man all-in on winning a Super Bowl, being the best leader and teammate he can be, and a man who will give everything he has to the city of Seattle and to the 12s all across the world. Thank you for believing in me. End quote. Adams was the number six overall pick out of LSU in 2017. Started all 46 games he played in his three-year career in New York. Last year, Adams recorded 75 tackles, six and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and one interception, which he returned 61 yards for a touchdown. Well, the Seahawks were also busy handing out pink slips to players on Sunday. Seven players were waived and two terminated, including backup center Joey Hunt, Hunt appeared in 34 games for Seattle since being selected in the sixth round of the 2016 draft. He started 11 of those games, including eight at center in place of Justin Britt last season. Seahawks also terminated defensive end Brandon Jackson. Those waived included running back Patrick Carr, wide receiver Seth Dawkins, guard Khalil McKenzie, defensive back Josh Norwood, guard Jordan Roos, linebacker Sutton Smith, and tight end Dominic Wood Anderson. Yesterday's moves trimmed Seattle's roster to 81. Training camp, by the way, begins tomorrow. Meanwhile, the NFL has officially canceled the preseason. Seahawks and the 31 other NFL teams are reporting to training camp this week following an offseason that was anything but business as usual. Teams didn't have the benefit of offseason workouts due to COVID-19 pandemic and to account for the longer time players will need to get ready for game action, the NFL announced Monday it is canceling the 2020 preseason. Seahawks season ticket holders will be refunded or receive credit towards their 2021 season ticket renewal for the two scheduled home games that were to be against the Raiders and the Chargers. Seattle had also been scheduled to play at Minnesota and Houston during the preseason. Instead, the Hawks will spend the next six weeks preparing for their season opener in Atlanta. Well, here's a look at what we have this week on the NCW Live Channel sports schedule. It begins Thursday with Hockey Night. Would Angie Wong take on the Salmon Arm Silverbacks at 7? Baseball featured Friday. The Apple Sox and Bellingham Bells go out at 6.30. Then on Saturday, Cashmere and Cascade Girls Soccer at 2, followed by another race night from back on July 11th, North Valley Mechanical Night at WVSO. The racing starts Saturday at 6 o'clock. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thanks a bunch, Eric, and that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. For all the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Are you wanting high-speed internet but don't have access to PUD fiber? Try SkyFi high-speed wireless internet from Localtel. Call 888-8888 today.
Get the fastest internet available in North Central Washington by switching to LocalTel and get speeds up to 1,000 meg. Call 888-8888 today or go online to LocalTel.net. 